In this video, I will explain how the periodic table of classes of science must be read and interpreted. Then I will show how it can be applied to phenomena of reality. And finally, I will discuss a little bit the philosophical consequences of adopting a realistic theory of science. A periodic table is a diagram printed on the plan that shows us the periods that are involved in a process, an event, or object. So the period we are talking about in this case, these periods are described by the solenoid of semiosis. This diagram, the solenoid of semiosis, has four periods, and they appear in the periodic table on this side grounding, presentation, representation, and communication are the four periods described by the solenoid of semiosis. The classes of science are types, are families of science that share the same properties. What properties are we talking about? the properties of the configuration that can be observed in the solenoid of semiosis. Now, there are 11 aspects which give us three correlates. As the three categories, they enter into the 11 aspects and into the three correlates, we have only 66 possible configurations and that's what is being described by the periodic table of classes of science. Each configuration is a bunch of properties holding together and they represent one a specific class of sign. The colors of the periodic table are linked to the three categories and their possible degenerations. So we have red for firstness, yellow for secondness, and blue for thirdness. And then orange for firstness of secondness, green for secondness of thirdness, and purple for firstness of thirdness. The first correlate of each class of sign is the one who determines its color. So we have here all these six classes of signs, all red, because all of them have Quality signs in the first correlate and quality sign has firstness in the first correlate. So here we have all orange because outer signs they are all uh, firstness of secondness in the first correlate. Since signs they are pure secondness in the first correlate. We have here hollow signs because the hollow sign is firstness of thirdness. And then replica because in the first correlate the replica is secondness of thirdness. And finally we have here blue because the ledger sign is in the first correlate uh, pure thirdness. So that's how we explain the colors. Now let's talk about the numbers that are around each of the classes of signs. Now the first number we want to talk about is the, this little one here which is in the upper uh, right corner. It goes from 1 to 66 and it shows how semiosis develops, grows as it departs from firstness towards secondness and then from secondness towards thirdness. So this is the ID of every class of sign as it participates in the whole of semiosis. There are two other sequences of numbers. One is located in the upper left corner and the other is located at the bottom of every class of sign. So the one which is up here in the upper left corner is linked to the three correlates of every class of sign. While the 11 numbers which are at the bottom, they represent the 11 aspects of the solenoid of semiosis. Now remember that a correlate is actually a panoramic, a macroscopic view of a class of sign. That's why it works with the idea of degeneration, while the aspects, they give us a minute, 
that is a microscopic view of every aspect of science. So the aspects, they do not work with the idea of degeneration. Only pure categories, firstness, secondness, and thirdness. That's the main difference between uh, describing a class of science using correlates and describing it using the 11 aspects. Another interesting feature of our periodic table of classes of science is that it gives us the 10 genuine classes of science described by the syllabus of 1903 in the same order of implication that Peirce gave us. So, if we could erase all 56 classes of science that has some kind of degeneration, what it remains is only the 10 classes of science which are genuine in the precise same order, organization, relational structure that they have in the small triangle design by Peirce. Now let's explain the empty spaces or holes that are in the middle of the periodic table. What are they doing there? Now, remember that our periodic table is an expansion from Peirce's 10 genuine classes of science. So, when we expand uh, Peirce's triangle, there is an important thing happening. One of the vertices has two possibilities of degeneration. That's what happens with thirdness. Thirdness can degenerate into secondness of thirdness and then firstness of thirdness. This vertex is down here. Uh, it has only one possible degeneration, which is firstness of secondness. And then we have at this corner here, uh, firstness, which has no possibility of degeneration. So when we expand uh, the small triangle of purse, into the 66 class, it is natural that this corner here will have more possibilities of expansion, while the other two will have less possibility. This will produce a distortion, which is represented by the empty spaces. The same thing happens when we project the globe of our planet into a plan. Now, what happens then? We see that near the poles, North Pole and South Pole, we see the territories there, they are being distorted, or then we have to create some empty spaces between the territories to preserve the same relational uh, structure that the globe as a tridimensional structure has. Now, this is something related to projective geometry and to the idea of degeneration. So, that's what's going on here on this table as well. There's another way of explaining the 12 holes or empty spaces of our periodic table by using the 11 aspects. And this is even more interesting because it shows, it reveals the deep structure that holds semiosis, that holds the phenomenon together. Because if we take a look at the solenoidal semiosis of all 12 classes of science that were chopped, that were eliminated in our periodic table, we see that they share a same property. All of them, they have secondness on one of the aspects of the axis of signification without having secondness on the, ax, uh, on the aspects of the two other axes, the axis of objectivation and of interpretation. What does that mean? Well, it means that that would allow a sign to be existentially connected to an object without the, the existence of an object. That would be uh, impossible. It would allow things as fingerprints of ghosts or someone receiving an information of reality without ever being uh, something uh, emitting the information that's being received. So this means that 
those classes of signs are eliminated because there is a razor eliminating them. And this is the razor of causality. If they would exist, causality would not hold. As they do not exist, causality holds. Now let's talk about the rule of implication that governs the relations among the periods and phases as well as among the 66 classes of signs of the periodic table. Now this rule says that uh, there is among the four periods of the solenoid of semiosis a implication that means that the grounding which is the first period is involved by presentation and grounding and presentation is involved by representation and then communication involves all the other three periods so there can be no communication without representation and the other two and there can be no representation without presentation and grounding and there is no presentation without grounding the same uh, goes for the phases the first phase is the perceptive one, the second one is the inquisitive phase, then we have deliberative phase and scientific phase. That means that we start uh, with perception, then we inquire, we research, we investigate, then we deliberate, we work reality, we participate, uh, of reality, and then we uh, build, uh, develop a discourse, uh, a argument about reality that is shared by the community of all interpretants. So there cannot be a scientific communication if there is not deliberation participation if there is no investigation or perception. All phases are involved one into the other. Now the same goes for the classes of signs. This class of sign here, the sin sign, index, this is sign, it is involved by all these other signs that are on this side of the periodic table and by its turn it involves all the classes of signs that are on the other uh, side of the table. So if we take the argument, the argument involves all these classes of signs and by their turn these classes of signs involve all the others. So the argument is the most complex sign because it involves all other classes of signs. While the uh, quality sign icon Rema is the less complex uh, class of sign because it does not involve any other class but it is involved by all the others. Another important feature of our periodic table is that it allows us to describe each of the 66 classes of signs in terms of periods and phases. And this is given by intersection between periods and phases. So if we take as examples the six classes of signs which are all red, all quad signs, we see that they belong to the period of grounding, but also they belong to the phase of perception. So they, they are groundings of perception. And this go on until we get to this more complex science. They are scientific communications. So they belong to the methodeutic phase of semiosis.